Hey guys, welcome back to the build. I'm starting off the machining on this project with the pinion assembly. The pinion is the driven gear made to do the spool for the final output. For every one turn of the handle, this gear will turn 3.6 times. Between the two gears, this gear will be seeing the most stress, so it's going to be made from stainless steel. The pinion assembly consists of three parts. The bearing, the spacer, and the pinion itself. In order to cut the teeth into the gear, we'll need an accurate arbor to press fit the blank onto so we have something to grab while in the mill. The stainless steel shaft will be turned to zero thou press fit with a threaded end to help force the gear blank into place. This is my first video using the new GoPro 5 for some of the shots, and I'm finding it a little tricky to get it to focus on close-up work. If any of y'all have ideas on how to fix this, let me know. The pinion gear is made from this piece of stainless stock I had. The two main operations here are to turn up gear blank on the lathe with finished dimensions for the bearing surface, bore, gear OD, and length that I can then transfer over to the mill to add the teeth in the dividing head. You'll notice after this part falls off, I probably could have bored that hole just a little deeper. With these two parts complete, I pressed the gear blank onto the arbor and used a nut to help run it down into place. This proved to provide a very strong bond for the milling operation. The arbor was then loaded into the fore jaw and trued into place. To find the center of the part for the gear cutting operation, I used a parallel on top of the gear cutter as a reference for zero, and then on the bottom for the far extent of the part. 
This distance divided by two in the DRO will be the center. Keep cool pressures low. I cut the teeth in two passes, with the cutter swinging towards the mount so the forces would not try to push the gear off the arbor. I got lucky on this one. The head has a 90 to 1 ratio, so cutting 15 divisions sits in without a remainder. This means the sector armors won't be necessary, and I'll get to stop on the same exact hole every time. Last two, when you finally found out if you were doing it right or not the whole time. I took the finished gear over to the sanding plate to remove any burrs and smooth out the sharp edges. For this part I used 600 grit wet sandpaper for the bottom side and a small file for the top where the sandpaper couldn't get.
The spacer is really nothing more than a small stainless steel ring, and in a production environment, this part would be machined into the gear itself. But for this prototype style build, I wanted to maintain as much flexibility as possible so I could tweak the parts if necessary along the way. The finished spacer was then brought to the sanding plate to hone it into its final, precise dimensions. And that's it for this section of the build. The only thing left to do is test fit the parts. Before seeing this on the video, I really didn't realize just how dirty these parts still were. So you need to pretend this is a super clean, precision assembly environment and you see only shiny parts and no shavings. The parts all fit great, so I'm starting on the main gear work next week. Subscribe to the channel to see the new videos as they come out, and thanks for watching.